All right, let's have a look at this example. What do we have here? Well, we have a current source, so it's 10 milliamps. Um, now we have this guy over here, and that's also a current source. But this is a dependent current source. The value of that current is actually dependent upon a voltage, and that voltage is Vx. So really, the value of this current is going to be 0 0.02 times whatever Vx is. Where is Vx? Well, Vx is defined here, plus, minus, it's the voltage across that 2K resistor. So this is a dependent current source. It's a voltage-dependent current source. All right, so how do we deal with this problem? Well, the first thing to do is let's draw our mesh currents. So I've got my I1 mesh current. I've got my I2 mesh current. I've got my I3 mesh current. All right. Now let's see if we can write down what we, what we know. Well, look, I know that basically I1, I know that straight away, I1 has to be equal to this uh, 10 milliamps. So that's really pretty easy, okay? What else can I do? <clears throat> well, I could look at traversing around the I2 mesh here. Yeah, I could do that. That's pretty easy to do. So let's, let's see if we can start right here then. Uh, so I'm going in this direction. So that's an I2 minus an I1, isn't it? So I can write that down. Minus, open a bracket, that's I2 minus I1. And that's multiplied by what? The 500 ohms. There it is. Okay, then I've got the voltage across this guy, which is a minus I2. And that's times what? 200. And then, of course, I've got the voltage across this 2K here, but so that's really what? That's the I minus I2 minus I3 in the bracket, and that's times 2K, and all of that is equal to zero. All right, so that's another equation that I've got. Now, the three unknowns in this problem, so I really need three equations. Uh, well, I don't know the voltage across that, uh, that current source over there, but I do know something about it, don't I? I know it's going in this direction, and so I could say, could I not, that that current, right, which is 0.02 Vx, let's write that down, 0.02 Vx, that current really is equal to what? It's equal to the I3, yep, minus the I1. Okay, so that's what that current's equal to. Yeah, that's good. Now, I've got another variable sitting in here, which is this Vx. So what is this Vx equal to? Now, let's think about that. Vx, what's Vx equal to? Vx is this voltage right here, isn't it? So Vx must be equal to, it must be I3 minus the I2 times 2K, isn't it? So I can write that down. I can say Vx is really equal to the I, open up a bracket, it's I3 minus I2, and it's multiplied by that 2K. All right, so I know Vx. Well, yes, as a final step then, I could actually put that Vx into there, could I not? And I could simply write this down now as 0 0.02, Right, this is Vx, isn't it? So I'll open up a bracket here. This is I3 minus I2, close the bracket, times 2K, and that's going to be equal to this, which is I3 minus I1. So that's it, really. We've got our equations. We have this guy right here. We really have this guy right here. And of course, we know I1. We know I1, and so we've really got two equations with two unknowns, which is the I2 and the I3, and we can actually solve this. Okay, that's yet another problem that we've considered. All right, see you next time.